friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Callie Bransford and last year I shared a video with some organizational tips from professional home organizers and I thought that it'd be fun to do the same thing but this time with professional home cleaners. Personally, I've never hired a professional cleaner at our home. It is something I always planned to do when I had baby number two but having a baby in a pandemic made that impossible. But that being said, I have lots of friends who use them and they always rave about their cleaning person's ability to get everything just cleaner. I mean, when you spend your career cleaning, you obviously learn some pretty good tricks of the trade. So I figured we could all benefit from their expertise by taking some of their best tips and using them ourselves. So I spent a bunch of time, like a lot of time, of scouring the internet to find tips from professional house cleaners. And this is what we got. Let's do this. All right, the first tip was don't neglect the little things. Jennifer Gregory, who's a brand manager for Molly Maid, shared in a tip um, that I found on care.com, I think it was a care.com article, that she explained that many of us know how to clean the typical stuff. We clean the tubs and the sinks when we clean our bathroom, but then we neglect little things like the toothbrush holder or the soap dispenser. And she said, don't skip on these things because they can make a room look dirty even when you've deep cleaned the big stuff. Not to mention that a lot of these smaller things are actually often the germiest. So personally, I can be super guilty of this. I feel like there's two types of cleaning people. You're either someone who's a tidier. This means you clean a little bit every day, you focus on keeping things tidy, or you're a deep cleaner, meaning you might go long periods of time without cleaning, but then you super deep clean all at once. Personally, I'm a tidier. If you saw my cleaning habits video, you know I do little things every day to keep my house more tidy. Anyways, my point is, as a tidier, I often can overlook little things. Sometimes it just feels like too much to get to. So my trick that I've been using to adopt this is that I start, I've started by taking just an extra two or three minutes when I'm tidying something and find one or two small overlooked things to clean each day. I'm still able to fit it into my daily tidying habits and routine. It doesn't take an immense amount of time, but it also has made sure that I don't overlook the smaller stuff. And this has helped me a lot to help keep things a little cleaner and to adopt this habit into my cleaning routine. All right, tip number two is to use an oven liner. Deborah Johnson of Mary Maids shared this in an Oprah article that I was reading, but using an oven liner cuts cleaning time of your oven at least in half. And honestly, I thought this was so brilliant. I didn't even know these things existed. I got one on Amazon. It catches all the spills and messes that fall to the bottom of your oven. Our current oven is older and definitely in rough shape inside, but this helps just keep it clean. And at the end of the year, when we do our kitchen renovation and we get a brand new oven, it'll be a really great way to keep that cleaner and prolong its life. All right, the next tip also from Johnson is to skip mopping. In that same article on Oprah, she suggested you can skip mopping because she says while mopping floors seems like a really good idea, it often just kind of spreads dirt around, doesn't actually remove it. So she re recommends instead using a steam cleaner to clean your floors. And I personally got a steam cleaner last year and I love it. I still use my Swiffer wet mop when I'm doing quick daily mops, but once a week or so I like to get out my steam mop and really get up the dirt and grime. She also said because there's no cleaner that's being used, there isn't any residue that's left behind and the temperature of the steam helps to sanitize as well. And I'll be honest with you, it does always make my floors look so much cleaner than when I use a mop. There's no streaks, there's no residue left behind. And I also love that my steam mop can be used for other things than just mopping. I pressure steam, clean dirt and grime in the kitchen and bathroom, steam clean my windows, all sorts of stuff. It is a really great tool to have in your arsenal. All right, moving right along, I have a hack from Melissa Maker. She's here on YouTube with the channel Clean My Space and she suggests adding a teaspoon of cornstarch to a cup of white vinegar and a cup of water for cleaning glass. The way she explains it is the cornstarch is sort of the magic ingredient because it's a super fine abrasive, which helps to bust away grime that would usually lead to the streaks. And I was actually amazed at how well this worked and how clean it got my glass, leaving no streaks behind. All right, I was trying to take a video to show you the streaks before and after on this window, but turns out it's very hard to film streaks on a window. The glare made it really hard, but I feel like the proof is in the pudding with how dirty my paper towel was, mind you. These windows had been washed not that long ago, but it's amazing how much cleaner this solution got my windows. All right, moving right along, the next one I saw multiple times from our professional cleaners is they suggest you tackle simple tasks quickly and frequently. Many of the tips that I read from the pros were very clear and they said, do not procrastinate on your cleaning. They said doing small things as they are needed instead of letting them build up and doing them all at once keeps your spaces overall much cleaner. Do the dishes after every meal instead of once a day. Take the trash out the minute it starts to get full instead of letting it overflow. And then you and your spouse kind of go through that war of like seeing who can push it down more. 
you've all done it, you know you have. Sweep the floors each night instead of just once a week. It just keeps spaces looking and feeling clean without spending hours on it. I think sometimes it's really easy to procrastinate cleaning tasks due mainly to time. And listen, I get it. I have a toddler, I have a newborn. I'm very much aware of the time I do and do not have right now. But I've also found that taking two minutes each day to do something usually ends up taking less time overall than if I ignored it all week or longer and then tried to tackle it all at once. So here's an example. Once a day, I actively remove things from my home that don't belong. This means I'm taking the trash out, breaking down boxes from online purchases to go to the recycling, throwing away or putting away clutter. If I do this actively every day, it doesn't take me any more than five or 10 minutes. But if I let it accumulate and wait to do it once a week on the weekend or whatever, then it easily can consume over an hour of my day. And when you think about it that way, giving up 10 minutes of my day every day is way more manageable than trying to find a dedicated hour of my life to do it some other time. We're just gonna play the fun game of like, where is Olive in the background? Now she's over here. Maybe she'll be over there. We don't know what she's doing. If you're new here, Olive is my French bulldog. She loves to photobomb my videos, sometimes we do tallies, we count how many times you can find her. She's clearly, clearly trying to play that game today. All right, going off that tip, Becky uh, Rappenchuk from cleanmama.com suggests using a daily checklist to help you keep your house more tidy. She explains that using checklists just helps you keep everything organized. You can tackle one or two things every day or dedicate certain days to certain tasks so you just get around to everything. And in case you're new here and you didn't know, I actually have a ton of free printables on my blog and I have a cleaning checklist printable that you can download. I'll link that for you down below. Okay, another tip I saw from tons of cleaning professionals was to work from top to bottom. And this tip honestly makes a lot of sense. Like there's no point in cleaning the floor than just to wipe the surfaces and get all the dirt from the surfaces onto the floor. But as obvious as it is, I realized I wasn't always doing this in my own cleaning. Sometimes I'd start with what I found to be the biggest mess instead of starting from top to bottom. So an example is the other day I was cleaning my kitchen and the first thing I did was sweep them up because the floors were just really dirty. They had been neglected for a few days. Hello, newborn life over here. And then I found myself wiping my counters and crumbs getting onto the freshly cleaned floors. Didn't really make any sense. So just as you enter a space, try to start to get in the habit of starting high and moving down. Dust and wipe any high surfaces and move to counter hype surfaces and then always leave your floors for last. All right, the next tip that we can get from cleaning professionals is to schedule cleaning time in. Cleaning professionals show up at your house at a certain time and they have a specific time frame that they need to clean in. It's part of why they're so effective. They literally have a dedicated period of time to clean a house as opposed to just squeezing it in here and there, which let's be honest, that's how most of us are cleaning, really cleaning while doing other things around the house. The thought is consider scheduling in times a few times a week for specific cleaning tasks. I've told you guys before that I use certain days to stack whole certain things in my house, and this is my way of scheduling these things in so I know that they get done. Because yes, as the people who live in the house, most of our cleaning happens here and there throughout the day, and not like during a dedicated three hours like with a cleaning professional. But for certain tasks, I find it really worthwhile to schedule in the time so that we know that it's going to get done. For me, one of those things is my bathroom. I literally have a specific time and day every single week when I deep clean my bathroom and that way I know it's gonna get done and it's scheduled into my life so it doesn't not happen. And just like cleaning pros don't try to clean while watching Wheel of Fortune, we too should try to remove distractions during some of these cleaning, scheduled cleaning times. So consider putting on music or listening to a podcast but get rid of time-wasting distractions like TV or social media during these dedicated times. That way you can just dedicate yourself to that task and you'll be more effective and you will do it in a much more timely manner. All right, the next tip was from Donna Boone and she's the owner of a company called Valley Maids and she said to have a cleaning caddy with everything that you need. Just the idea of having everything you need in one caddy instead of storing them in a cupboard or shelf makes quick cleaning easy because you can just grab all your tools at once and get started. And this is actually something that I've adopted in my upstairs bathroom. I have all my bathroom cleaning must-haves in one caddy. This way on bathroom clean day, which I told you I schedule in, it's Thursday nights by the way, I can just grab the caddy and I can get to work and then I slide it all into the caddy and slide it away when I'm done. Going off of that tip, another thing that I heard a lot of the professionals mention was to simplify your supplies, that you don't really need that many different kinds of cleaners. It's just bulky and wasting time and space. And while there are some 
um, specialty products that are really nice to have. In general, there are a lot of more multi-purpose cleaners that rock that you can use for multiple things. So most of the cleaners agree that you need a light date duty evaporating cleaner, something like a glass cleaner, cleaning vinegar, or a multi-surface cleaner. Then something more heavy duty for cutting through grease, some type of abrasive cleaner, and then that's kind of it. That's like your dynamic duo or trio or how many things that I just mentioned? Three things? I don't know. It's just the idea that while there are use for some, in general, it's best to try to steer away from all the special sprays that are single use products and really simplify how many products that you're using because it's going to make cleaning just quicker and more effective. And the final tip that I saw suggested was to make sure you're investing in your cleaning tools. I feel like this applies to more than just cleaning, but it's something worth doing a little bit of research on and finding the right tools for you that are gonna get the job done and not always just going like for the best deal, the best bargain. If you invest in tools that are more effective, it's just going to make cleaning quicker and more effective too. All right, my friends, that does it. That was some of the cleaning tips that I learned from professional cleaners. I hope that you can take some of these insights from these pros and apply them to your own cleaning to make cleaning in your house a little bit easier. But as always, that does it for this video. Thank you so, so much for stopping by and watching. I always appreciate you guys coming by and watching every video that you watch. I truly appreciate it. But that does it for this video, and I will see you all in the next video.